guys welcome back to my spot come in welcome have a seat grab all the stuff you need and guess what let me show y'all my outfit of the day mm. Ooh, all the way down to the sneakers y'all know how i do welcome what's popping guys welcome back to the spot how you guys doing on this lovely day? I am great. Thank you for asking. I know, I know, I know, guys. It's been a minute. It's been about a couple of weeks or so. But I didn't give a definite schedule. So, you know, y'all can slide in. And I'll be, you know, coming on here. I don't know still. No schedule. Just so y'all know. But. Just look out for the videos, you feel me? I'm going to get it together. But, let me tell y'all what I'm eating tonight, or today. I mean, Panda Express. I got some walnut shrimp, and I got orange chicken, and I got some lo mein. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Lo mein, la mein, la mein, whatever it is. I got that. So, what I'll be, um... What we'll be, you know, talking about today. I got some more questions from the homie Karen. Appreciate you, Karen. And I also want you to know that I didn't forget about you or I didn't want to answer your questions. Like I said, I'm very transparent. You can ask me whatever you want to ask me. That goes for anybody. Whatever you guys want to ask, ask. You feel me? I mean, for the most part, I don't know. I don't think there is really nothing that's a part of my life that's too personal, to be honest. But, but I appreciate the I appreciate the support and the love from Karen and everybody else. But I just say her particularly because she do, um, you know, ask me questions or whatever something she want to know. She's just not afraid to ask, which no one should be. So make sure, guys, you ask. If there's anything you want to know, just ask me. So I got some more questions today um, to answer that she wants to know. I'm pretty sure that you guys want to know too. Um, the first question she asks, do I want to have kids? I have answered this question before, um, but I don't mind answering it again because, you know, I'm sure most of you guys probably don't know, but, um, at this point in my life, no, I did want kids before, but I wanted them for the wrong reason. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, what I mean by the wrong reason is I wanted at least one child because I felt like that child will fill the void that I have within me, um, which is, you know, the death of my mom and now my father. I just felt like, you know, uh, a child's love is unconditional, and I felt like that would come in and replace that unconditional love that I received from my mom at the time and now my dad. And that's not a that's not a good reason I feel like that you should want to have a child and bring a child into this world. Cause honey, this world is tough. It's tough, it's tough, you know. Um but not in this, not at this point. But I mean if it came along and like something happened and I had to take on like the responsibility of a child or something. I can't tell, turn a child away, but just on my own personal, no. Um, um, another question is, what do I do for a living? I work for a drug testing company. Years come uh, March 9th. Of 2020. Um, another question is, um, what is my biggest regret, and if I have one? Um, hmm. I don't know. My my perception on regret now has kind of changed, and and 
think it has evolved. I used to have a lot of regrets, but when you mature, they don't really, you don't really look at them as regrets. You more so look at them as poor choices, poor decisions, and they're, they're, you go through them to be taught a lesson or lessons. So, I don't think I have a regret. I no longer have regrets. I want to make sure though, but I don't think I have any. Um, No, I don't think I have any. I couldn't think of none, so. I think that's why, because I changed my perception on it. Um, which I don't think that, you know, it's a bad thing to have regrets, but. I feel like if you do anything, anything that you do, there's a reason why you did it, or you decided to do that, or made that decision or choice. At the time, you did the best you could. So, what would I have told my 18-year-old self before I stepped out into this world? Then, I would have um, told myself that don't focus on one thing. Because um, sky's the limit, meaning that... Be open to trying different things so that if something doesn't work, you can do something else. Um, i give you an example. Let me drink some wine, guys. It's a little dry. Okay, so... When I when I um, was young, I was taught to play basketball since I was like in the second grade. But sports for like girls at the time, you couldn't really play when you were in school. You I mean you could play when you were in school, but you couldn't play on a the team. They only had a boys basketball team. So the only time that I could really play was when we went out for recess. And when I got home, was I could play pickup basketball at the court, or I could, you know, play on my own personal basketball goal that I had at my house. So, the moment I really learned and understood the game of basketball, I had put in my mind that that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to do nothing else. So, with that being the only thing that I wanted to do. I honed in on that. I focused on that. I committed, dedicated all my time, my effort, my energy, everything into just that. So any decision that I made had to revolve around that one particular dream, that one particular goal that I had in mind. So when I decided to, when I was being recruited for basketball, I still had that one goal in mind. I didn't care about my grade. I mean, I didn't say I didn't care about my grades, but I didn't care about the thing that I wanted to major in, I had a major in mind, but with me knowing the type of talent that I had, I kind of looked at it like, there's nothing that's going to stop me. I got this. So, I BS the, AC, the BS the ACT, the SAT, but I still got recruited, still went to a college, still got quite a bit of letters for recruitment. But I get to a college, I sign with a college, and the reason why I decided to sign with that college is because the, the coach offered me that once my eligibility was up for playing basketball with that um, school, that college, I could still keep my athletic scholarship to continue my education further, whether that was for a master's, second bachelor's, doctor's, whatever. So I felt like that was a great decision on my part because... Like I said, the goal was, I'm going to make it in basketball. I'm going to the WNBA. That's where I'm going. Well, I wanted to be an engineer. But the college that I decided to sign to, 
with that offer. They didn't offer that that um, engineering at the time, so I just picked the whatever degree, just whatever. I kind of just went with whatever. I didn't focus on what that degree was because I already knew going to the WNBA. Well, playing ball, playing ball, playing college. I mean, playing college ball, doing well, steady rising, steady. You know, being talked about. Um, I was I met the newspapers when I was in high school in my hometown Dallas, Texas. Um, I met the newspapers and stuff when I was in college. I had people coming over to me every time every game, getting my autograph, got posters, the whole nine taking pictures. Like I ain't gonna lie, y'all feel like a celebrity. But I didn't take into consideration that how important I was to my team. I just was doing my, I felt like I was doing a job to make sure that as a team, we stay cohesive and we work together so that we can get that win. I didn't realize like my true talent or how important I was to a team until I broke my hand, which is my fourth, well, my fourth metacarpal on my left hand. And this was during my senior year and I was, you know, I was doing really well that season two. I was doing well. I got, I got awards. I got all that. I never took an account that I could get hurt. Because most of you think about injuries like your Achilles, your your ACL, your MCL, um, what else is something that's major? It could be like your collarbone, like something that could affect you from actually performing. I didn't think nothing about the hand when that's just as important. So Everything started going downhill for me. My confidence, my self esteem, my ambition, all that. I thought my life was over. So I didn't care to do nothing else. And I didn't take into account the BS degree that I accepted because I thought I was going all the way. Until that moment, I couldn't play no more. So, if I hadn't made the choice and the decision to just hone in on that one thing, I probably would be doing a lot more with my life. Not saying that it's shit, but it's just not the life I thought I would be having, you know, that I would have. Because I don't know if most of y'all know or not, but you really don't make any money in the WNBA. You know, all the money is overseas. And I wanted to, you know, I knew being part of the WNBA, I got an even better chance of going overseas. So if I really wanted the money, I go overseas. But I was really just playing because that was the love of the, the love and the and the and the 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 uh, respect that I had for the game as a whole. So. If I hadn't been doing, if I hadn't been thinking like that, I would have accomplished a lot more in my life. So I just feel like that I would be a lot further. Like I feel like my my ambitious part of me died when I um, had that injury. So I just kind of been coasting because I don't have any interest really in nothing else. So now I'm at the point in my life where now I'm finding interest. Anything that I have a slight interest in, I'm going to just try it. If I don't like it, try something else. I'm not saying that it's all about money, but right now technology is booming. And it's a lot of money in that. Entrepreneurship, a lot of money in that. So me just sitting around being comfortable and still mad and holding on to the same dream that's been gone for, I don't know, forever now, it ain't getting me nowhere. So that's what I would tell my 18-year-old self. There's more out there than just one dream. Have something to fall back on. 
in case that doesn't work. And which I did to a stint. I did. I still got the degree. I still have it to this day. But I don't want to use it because I didn't. It was a BS degree. It's nothing that interests me. I just got it. Um, but I'm going to get there. I'm going to figure it out. And the last question that she asked is, what is my fondest memory thus far? Now, this is going to sound cliche. Um, and I've had a lot of dope memories. But um, I'm going to have to say my fondest memory will have to be um, I'm about to say meeting Darnisha. I'm going to tell y'all why. Now I'm going to have to tell y'all why. Again, when I first met her, she trusted me with, you know, something I feel like that was hers. And she didn't know me. But she knew that I needed to handle something. And I just appreciate that. Because it's hard to trust people when you first meet them when you don't know them from nothing. I'm, I'm trying to see if I should say that. I guess I could. Um, okay, I can tell you. When she met me, I didn't have a vehicle because my license was suspended. And my license was suspended because the while that the whole time that I was off at, away at college, I left my car um, that was left to me from my mom when she passed there so that my sister could have a way back and forth to drive. Well, while it was in her possession, there were some tickets got put on the car. I'm not saying that it was her fault or she had anything to do with it, um, but the car was still in her possession regardless to who drove it and got tickets on it. Well, I didn't know that they had gotten tickets on it, so they um, suspended my license. And I would have never known that because um, I went to college in Iowa. I still was able to transfer my Dallas um, license to Iowa license. Had no issue. They never said anything came up. Well, when I get back to Arizona, I tried to switch my Iowa license to Arizona. That's when I found out that my that my license was suspended and I needed to pay them tickets off before I can get them reinstated. So she didn't know any of that until I, you know, I told her, of course, I communicated that with her why I didn't have a job, I mean, I have a car. So she said, you can use mine. And this girl didn't know me for maybe only a couple of days, a week the most. She allowed me to use her vehicle. I go to the driver's ed. I take the test, pass it of course, the driving and the written. I did redo all of that. And I got my license that same day. Now I knew she had to, um, I did take out work to do this because she allowed me to do it, to take use her car. Uh, once I, you know, I took her to work, she allowed me to drop her off at work and to keep her car. I don't know anybody that would do that for just somebody they don't know. Something in her must have told her that she could trust me. That is my fondest memory because I would not have my car, my license, and everything if she hadn't came along and trusted me. Because I had people in my life prior to her that still didn't want to see me do that because I don't really know. I think it's because they wanted me to continue to ride with them, drive them around, whatever you want to call it. But I appreciate her doing that for me, you know, because she didn't know me. And I feel like... That says a lot about her as a person and her character. And that's my fondest memory. Because I had to have a vehicle to do it. You know? So, regardless, y'all, regardless to what you do in life, Remember, you meet people for a reason, 
Some people supposed to stay in your life as, you know, for a lifetime, some people for a season. But there are good people in this world, no matter how many bad people you've met, there are some genuinely good-hearted people. Of course, she's one of them, I'm one of them, and there's many more. But we out of time, guys. I'm full. I'm full, guys. I ain't got no more. Room to add no more food. And um, that's all the questions. And I have time for tonight. But I appreciate you guys sliding through, coming through. And remember that anything you want to know, anything you want to ask, comment below. That's fine too. But make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share to your friends. Or whoever you associate with, you know, if you or them are interested. And I appreciate your time. Make sure y'all have a good night.